Well, uh, Zartaj, I thank you so much for helping my project. Could you say a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, so hello, everyone. I am Zartaj Ahmed from Pakistan, and I am basically a software engineer um, and a mother of two children. Um, I run a, an organization called Pi Space Science Education Center, which is dedicated towards um, creating awareness about space science and space science education. Um, oh, so I guess, first of all, talking about uh, programming, uh, what kind of um, technologies do you uh, specialize in? Okay, so I had um, studied it long time back, um, but it was um, pretty much .NET that I remember the last uh, .NET platform that I used for programming. Um, and then I came onto the education side where I was teaching, where I am teaching Python and um, C language to the students um, that is used for artificial intelligence. And in robotics, we're doing a lot of visual programming, which is block-based programming. Um, so that is, yeah, that is it. Yeah, I was noticing you have a, a first Lego robotics team that you've right, put together. Right. Could you talk a little bit more about that, about uh, how you got started and what y'all do and uh, the details? Sure. So, sure. Um, so basically, um, I had started um, working in a school um, in here in Pakistan, and I was teaching students from grade, I would say, um, the younger grade levels, the junior and the elementary levels. Um, and what I was um, challenged, I would say, in a manner was that students would not take interest in um, the classroom teaching and you know the classroom environment or learning from books. But what they would be interested in would be robotics and computer science because of the exploratory nature. So what I did was in 2011 in that school, I started a robotics program for students. And I signed up um, a lot of students and um, that was the first time in Pakistan. And then we went on to establish Pakistan's first um, STEM education institute. Um, from there, we started introducing first Lego League in Pakistan. So Lego, as everyone's aware, it's, it's the bricks that we know, but girls, you know, make doll houses out of it. What truly inspired me was the fact that Lego bricks were programmable. So that is where the programming came in and I was able to teach a lot to my students and they would enjoy it because they could see the purpose of, of something like the robot accomplishing a mission or a challenge and they were controlling it. So I've been training uh, teams of kids aged um, 10, 12 years, all the way to 15, 16 years. And we have traveled worldwide with our teams participating in different national and international competitions. Um, and that has added a great value in my students' uh, learning experience and the ability um, and their approach to look at different things. It has opened up their minds. What are some of the, the missions that uh, you have to try to accomplish with the, the robot? Okay. So for example, um, one of these years, we did have a space science theme. So, so the robot had to do certain missions, for example, pick and place certain objects, um, or, or you know, maybe there's a landing site and there's some material that needs to be taken from one place to the other. Um, similarly, um, if the robot has to avoid certain obstacles, um, and then it has to be programmed. Um, maybe it has to follow certain lines on the floor. So those are some of the missions that you have to program the robot to achieve. And you talked about uh, how your uh, facility teaches space science. Um, so robotics is obviously a key part of that, but uh, there must be much more to it. Right, right, right. So um, basically the idea of teaching space science or to introduce space science programs came from, from robotics. Um, so I started on teaching robotics, but then my business partner, um, he was studying in Australia and um, he still is, you know, part of the time he is there. Um, he came in with this idea of a space science educational initiative. And he had been working at a facility in Australia 
where they, they teach students about Mission to Mars, about different things that they do, how do scientists and engineers do research. Um, so all of that idea, and they have set up simulated Mars, Martian surface. Um, so with their help, what we try to do over here is we introduce those programs to see how the interest was in Pakistan among the students and the parents. And although there are so many space science museums around the world, yet um, we don't have a lot of space science educational programs. So the interest was great. We designed a curriculum which was best suited for Pakistani students. And then now we have um, expanded ourselves in, in developing a STEM education portal, which focuses on space science education programs, virtual robotics, because of the pandemic, everything had to be virtual. So we um, also have some virtual robotics um, programs that we train the students on. And we've also had competitions on them. So that is very, very exciting. Kids find it very exciting. That, that is really neat. I, I was thinking with this pandemic, um, talk about a good time to have a personal spacesuit. <laughs> I know. So um, this is again to inspire the children, you know, when you go in this flight suit, um, although we are educators, but when we go in, in a classroom, the kids really get inspired and they're like, oh my God, she's an astronaut. So we have our whole team of educators dressed in flight suits um, and we have designed them. It's a, taking inspiration from NASA, I should say. Um, and we have designed them just to make sure that, you know, when you are immersed completely in an experience and you're passionate about it, that's when you teach well, that's when you train well. So that is the idea and kids get really excited when they see us in flight suits. Even adults do, they get excited. <laughs> That's awesome. No, definitely uh, it helps to um, a, kind of focus the mind and the attention on, on uh, what, you're, what you're doing. Um, right. So the Mars 2020 rover landed last week and yeah. I was watching the uh, video, you know, the conference yesterday where they were showing some of the video of the uh, parachute deploying and you know the, right. the heat shield coming out and the crane maneuver uh, I was wondering um uh, it, maybe it's too early already uh, but uh, how that might be integrated into your your education no program right um so that's a very good question Nathan um yes certainly so we when we conduct workshops and trainings what we try to do is we show students what is happening currently around the world. And it's very important to, to form those connections because then these students who we are training today, they will grow up in a world where there will be further advancements. Um, we also believe that space science very nicely encapsulates the, all the branches of science and engineering. And whatever you're teaching, space science has everything embedded. Like you wouldn't think of astrophysics otherwise if it wasn't for space science. So application, application of physics in astronomy or space science, that is how you come with it. And then similarly for biology, right? Astrobiology um, and then geology. So all these subjects and the way you teach them, we do incorporate all of this. We show them videos we make them make landers. So one of our very popular activity among the students is landing atlas, where they learn about what a lander is. Now that lander could go to Mars or to moon. And um, so we, we uh, simulate all this experience. And I would be, I'd like to share about one of the events. It is one of the many that we've done where we created a simulated Mars surface where there were rovers running. So we have these Titan Mars rover kits, but we also created a moon surface where we had this model of the moon lander over their place. And the students could actually see how it looks and what are the challenges. And this is how one needs to be in the shoes of the scientists and engineers to solve these problems. And that's really neat. And, and you know, um, China had that uh, moon lander just last December yeah. that was able to send back several, several kilograms of uh, moon material. Right, right. Um, I would say souvenirs from the moon <laughs> coming back. 
And so uh, were the kids excited about that or what do they think? Yes, yes. I mean, it is really exciting um, for the kids to actually know that, um, you know, something is coming back to earth. So obviously we are sending these robotic missions, these rovers, these landers, but, you know, getting something from there, that is very, very exciting, which means that it is a two-way um, thing that we're talking about. And when we talk about um, a lot of these private companies are coming up which, who are talking about humans going into space, like the crude mission um, that went and some of the astronauts came back. So going to um, ISS or the low earth orbit, I think it's gonna be you know, something, an adventure trip or something for everyone. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, have you by chance been following uh, SpaceX and what they've been doing with their Starship uh, development? Yeah, 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 I have been. Um, so yeah, that's very exciting what they're doing. Um, I even followed um, the two astronauts who went um, and then they, uh, you know, came back. So I mean, all of these things, you know, they, they look like science fiction, like we see in movies. But when you see that happening in the real world and where we are headed, I think that's very important um, for our upcoming generations to know. Here in Pakistan, I would say that um, obviously in other parts of the world as well, but in Pakistan, um, when we teach about space science, we're constantly asked by parents that, why do you want to make everyone astronauts? Is everyone going to be going to the space? But you never know. There are so many other problems that these astronauts and people who are doing research on the ISS are solving. And I think it's very important to understand that all of this research is helping humans address the challenges of, the, of this world in a much better way. Absolutely, and plus we need uh, way more than just astronauts uh, and engineers. Yeah. We also need, uh, you know, managers and, you know, technicians and, um, That's right. you know, people who could prepare the food and, you know, people who could talk about yeah. it. There's a whole right. range of skills we need. Right, right. Um, and, you know, um, I mean, this pandemic has, has shown us that how an unforeseen situation needs to be handled, not by only a few people, but by people at, at large. We all have been affected. Life has been disrupted. And I think it's a very important time to talk about these things that space science lets you um, tackle the problems and challenges of the other planet. And it's not only that, it helps you um, look at things in a very different perspective. So I think all of this is very important for the upcoming generation. And do you see uh, the upcoming generation as being really hopeful about the future and really anxious to explore? Or do you see some hesitancy uh, from them and, and uh, some encouragement that they might need? Um, so what we have seen is when we talk to students of all ages, um, they're very, very excited. I would say the Generation Z, as we call them, these kids, um, they are adventurous in nature, I feel. And they would like to explore. Um, and they would push everything to the limits also. So if you say that um, this watch is waterproof, they would try it out, definitely. <laughs> so... Um, I mean, this is what their nature is and they're digital natives. So I feel there's a lot of excitement. We have kids as young as six, seven year olds and they are super excited. Of course, sometimes these kids, they don't know. Um, so when we dress up in flight suits and go, there was this little girl and I talk about her quite a lot. She was so excited, although she was too young to understand programming, but she was working in a team with her sibling. And they were trying to learn programming because it was in um, you know, the Arduo blog, the blog-based programming software. She yet made an effort to complete the program and it was a three-day workshop that we were doing. And then when she realized that it was over, it was the last day and she was playing with her rover on the simulated surface, she started crying that it's gonna be over. <laughs> so she was so excited. And so she had so much knowledge as well. So I really like when parents help their kids pursue their interest and give them that knowledge and those avenues 
where they can gain this knowledge. So that is that is very important. That's uh, amazing that she got so involved and engrossed in yeah. the project. Uh, do you know right. um, if she was able to continue uh, pursuing her interest? Yes, yes, she is. And um, so this was in a different city where we went. We were working with British Council. And um, so I'm sure she's pursuing it because her mother is, I think, on our Facebook page and she follows us and she is in contact. So now since everything is online, it is good to see that even from people from other cities can connect with you. Um, like earlier, we had all these video conferencing facilities, but we never realized that a lot of these events can all go online. Conferences can go online. You can connect me from what part of the world to this part of the world. So that is just great about, um, and I always see the, the opportunities like the pandemic, obviously um, there is a side that is concerning, but at the same time, this is an opportunity for us to look at things, how disruption can um, result in so many things, but then those are opportunities that we as humans should see how to deal with the unforeseen. I think that's a fear as well in humans by nature. We fear the unknown and the unforeseen, um, but I think it's very important to, to tackle situations like this. Um, and I guess, how well known is it about the plan to send people back to the moon in 2024? How well known? Um, not very much, if I have to be honest with you, not in Pakistan. People are more focused towards the Mars mission because um, of all the hype around perseverance and um, especially the, helic the helicopter that has gone with it, the ingenuity. I really, really like that idea. And I'm really looking forward to getting more news and information how the helicopter is supporting this particular mission in achieving what it's supposed to. Um, back to the moon, I think has, has slightly gone on the side because of perseverance. But um, I believe that if we start, um, you know, creating more awareness, um, and talking about it, I think that is what is required. Um, but for now, I think, uh, but people in Pakistan, I believe they don't know much about it. There's a very small group of, or a small percentage of people who talk about it or pursue it or follow these news channels and these, these um, news. Um, but yeah, I think um, it is something important to consider because moon is closer to Mars and there, there are quite a few things that are possible uh, with the moon mission. Uh, you know, it's not unusual actually. Most of the people I talk to who aren't uh, space people, if you will, uh, here in the US don't know about it either. Uh, so it's, yeah. it's, it's something that isn't well known in any part of the world, I don't think. Right, right, right. You're right, um, but yeah, I think NASA needs to promote the Artemis, the mission to moon now. <laughs> um, what do you think about it? Is it something that you see as uh, beneficial or do you, do you feel like it's like a, a step in the wrong direction or uh, what, what's your thoughts? Considering um, that, you know, the past missions as well, I feel that it is important. It is going to um, give us insights. And obviously with the advanced technology, the mission is going to look quite different. With the, the communications technology and the technology overall that we have today is going to be much, much better than what we had in 1960s. And I think that um, a lot of discoveries that have been made, um, even with that mission, they are very useful to this date. So I feel that um, personally, if um, I have to share my opinion, I feel that it is great for humans to go down this route, to explore the space, um, because we find so many other things apart from the planned mission, obviously, but with an advanced technology that we have today, I think um, it would be a great idea to go back to the moon and see how we fare between what was happening in 1960s and what we discovered and then what we can do today or achieve today. I know there's quite a few challenges there in terms of budget, in terms of technology being in place. And then obviously the expectations of people as well. Um, they're quite raised now, given the technology that we have today. 
I, a lot of people have some doubts in terms of if the cost is uh, worth it, if maybe that money would be better spent on other things. And well, what's your thoughts? What would make it worth it for you? Um, so yeah, I know there is there there is a thought process where people think that this um, investment or this amount of money could be spent in um, other things because they don't see, because probably the benefit is long-term. You don't um, get the benefit right away. Um, but I feel that it is worth it. I am um, a big advocate of scientific exploration, of space exploration. And so I know that it might take time and a lot of resources, um, but I think it is much needed. A lot of research that has come out of space, space exploration um, is very important. It's phenomenal. Um, and whatever we know about the space and whatever we have been able to solve, like I was reading um, quite some time back um, that we've been able to, that from the ISS, people can even tell you about the disasters, the, the natural disasters that we face. Um, now, things like that, that is very important about climate change, like a lot of countries are affected by it. We don't even realize it. But that is real and that is happening. So that is what I think. I feel that the investment in this and with, with NASA coming up with um, partnerships with other countries um, for the Artemis mission, I feel um, that is very important in taking other countries on board where each one is playing some part and contributing in some way. I think it's very, very important. Yeah, I know uh, uh, Canada, for example, is yeah. um, you know contributing one of their Canadian arms uh, to the gateway, and as right. part of that agreement, they're actually going to be sending um, an astronaut from Canada uh, around the moon as part of Artemis too. Yeah. Um, and what I mean, do you see some opportunities for Pakistan to actually get engaged in this and to um, maybe send some Pakistani uh, astronauts uh, to the moon? Right. Um, and that is what we have seen. Now, um, a few years back, nobody was even talking about space science education. Now we see quite a few um, private organizations were stepping into it. Um, I was reading about a Pakistani private company who will be working on the space technology. Although we have been having um, a, um, a university who teaches space science, which is a dedicated university for years. However, now we have seen that there is interest. There are people like the common people who are taking interest. And now people are asking this question that Pakistan should go ahead and do something in the field of space science. So I do see that happening. Um, and the government is also taking interest in terms of education because we know that without education, this will not be achieved. So making people aware and educating the upcoming generation, that is very important to achieve this. Um, but yes, um, I am very hopeful to see Pakistani astronauts in space soon. Um, yes, and talking about Pakistani astronauts, um, if it was safe and affordable, would you go to space? I would, I am very adventurous by nature. So I would, although my family wouldn't want me to, but I would take it on. I would definitely go um, if it was affordable and if I can manage, um, definitely. I mean, um, it's a no brainer for me. <laughs> so, so you mentioned your family might have some doubts and I might not yeah. want you to go. Uh, what yeah. would you do to uh, make them feel more comfortable with it? <laughs> I will have to, con you know, um, talk to them, convince them um, because generally my family is very supportive. But when it comes to something that has a bit of risk, um, then obviously they're concerned. But um, I feel that it's, uh, you know, what would be more convincing would be to see it become a, a common practice, I should say, um, where people are going and coming back from the orbit, like just like we saw from, you know, the SpaceX, uh, what they did, they sent in astronauts and it would be, you know, um, common practice, then that would be something convincing for them to let me go to. <laughs> like uh, if astronauts were going and coming every day, as an example. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know, just a trip. Um, I don't know, it takes uh, about 14 hours or so or more than that to travel to the US from here. Um, so it, it also depends on the 
um, you know, it, on the time it takes and how safe it is. I think, you know, the family would have only this concern. But I think that's what I mean when I say that if it's common practice, then yes, why not? Um, it would be something great. I, so it sounds like you have a really wonderful space education program going there. What do you see as being um, the, the thing that would let you grow the most and reach more people? Like what, how, how does your program get, um, uh, how do, how do pe more people get in touch with you? Okay, so we have, um, since we have this online program now, what the pandemic did for us was it exp helped us expedite our platform development. And when I say platform, it's now online. It's um, where we have all our content digitized. Um, we conduct these programs and people know about it. Um, we reach out to them through schools and through social media where parents are connected directly to us. And they come in with queries and um, also with questions like, you know, if my child wants to pursue it as a career, what do they do? So I think in terms of growing it, it is about creating awareness and we are connected on quite a few platforms. And we're hopeful that this product that we have built, because it is a STEM education portal where we have space science programs going on, it would be very easy for kids to learn from home at their own pace. Um, so that is what we've done. And we're planning on scaling this initiative to reach out to global audiences as well. So one of our space camp is still being planned um, in Indonesia with our partner. We've recently signed a collaboration. So we're hoping to do these space science programs around the world. We've done it earlier in person um, in, um, uh, in Bangkok. Um, I did conduct a teacher's um, workshop, which, which was on earth and space science in Indonesia. Um, so all of these things are going on and we're hoping to build those um, strategic alliances and partnerships with partners around the world to take this program to other countries as well. And that sounds really amazing. Um, now, there's uh, two private companies or two countries that have private com uh, companies that have been able to launch things into orbit. One was the US and the other one was New Zealand, which is kind of uh, surprising because you really <laughs> yeah. don't think of New Zealand as being um, a, a place of uh, kind of uh, rocket development and, and space exploration. Yeah. But the thing that I keep thinking is if New Zealand can create its own private space industry, um, what would the path look like for Pakistan to do the same thing? I think in terms of rocket development, it will take a while. Um, and as more and more countries come into this, I think it would pave the way for other countries and Pakistan as well. But I think at the moment, it will take some time. But yes, looking at New Zealand, that's a very good example. Um, for a country like New Zealand. And um, I believe that with, um, you know, every country is now coming forward with some sort of a mission um, or some sort of, um, you know, satellite or orbiting satellite. I think that that passes on information. Um, I think Pakistan will also, I'm sure I'm hopeful, um, that will also um, do something about it. And as I mentioned that there is a private company um, that has uh, emerged from Pakistan as well. And they're up to something working on space technology. We had heard about it a while ago. Um, so hoping for something to come from Pakistan as well. Sounds really amazing. Maybe I'll get to interview them too. <laughs> sure. Well, I really appreciate your time and I uh, look forward to seeing more of, uh, of you know, the, the scientists and engineers and explorers and creative types uh, that, that you're helping to develop. Thank you so much, Nathan. It was a uh, great speaking with you. You have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.